Good evening again, and welcome to Negro Leaguers in Puerto Rico, Jackie Robinson in Puerto Rico. Good evening, Jorge. How are you? Welcome. How are back. you, Adam? Very great, happy great. to be another chapter, another episode. Yes, this one I, very special for me. Very special. Yeah, of course. This one is very special because Saturday is Jackie Robinson's uh, day on all of Major League Baseball. So we wanted to to make sure to chat with with everybody beforehand to talk about mm -hmm. Jackie Robinson's time in Puerto Rico, which is not something that I know much about. I'm assuming that. A lot of the people watching this don't know about his history in Puerto Rico, but Jorge is going to uh, share some of that uh, knowledge that he's he's accumulated. He's gone through a lot of uh, newspapers and found some great clippings, and and uh, we're going to bring that all to you tonight. So I'm really excited for me to, to learn about Jackie Robinson's time in Puerto Rico, but also to share it with all of the folks watching now or watching on delay. So uh, thank you so much, Jorge. So yeah, let, let, let's let's kind of kick it off then. Yeah, well, let's, let's begin with this presentation about Jackie Robinson in Puerto Rico. I'm going to put the ad again because I, this was uh, done by Adam. Love it. <laughs> and we are going to talk about those two pictures later. So I want to trace something about uh, Jackie Robinson, how he came to Puerto Rico. Um, the first slide, well... He played with the Kansas City Monarchs in 1945. After he, fi he finished with the Kansas City Monarchs, in winter, he went to Venezuela. Uh, All-star team. Among them, there was a Craig Campanella, Quincy True, Buck Leonard. There was also uh, uh, Sam Jethro, and, of course, Jackie Robinson. That was in the winter of 1945. After he finished in Venezuela... There was a new, there was a, a newspaper in Mundo that they published that Jackie Robinson was signed by the, the Ponce Baseball Club in Puerto Rico. Um, he didn't come to Puerto Rico. He was in when 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 that um, news came. He was in New York. We were expecting him, but he didn't sign no contract because. If he would have signed a contract and did not come to Puerto Rico, he would have been suspended. So I think because I read uh, January, February, and March of 1946 of the newspapers, it doesn't say nothing about Jackie Robinson coming to Puerto Rico and the reason he didn't come. So it was only a rumor. Mm. So after that news of Jackie coming to Puerto Rico, he went to Montreal. And this is the first link that Jackie and Puerto Rico had. In his first game, Jackie uh, Robinson grounded out in his first at-bat to Jersey City shortstop Jaime Almendro from Puerto Rico. A great shortstop. In his second trip to the plate, produced a three-run homer, and he finished the game with a stat line of 4-5 with four RBIs as the Royals rooted the Giants by a score of 14-1. Jaime Almendro was one of the greatest defensive shortstop in Puerto Rico with San Juan. So that's the first relation that we had uh, with Jackie Robinson. The Brooklyn Dodgers come to Puerto Rico in March 1948. Here we have this picture. Uh, they arrived to the Isla Grande airport. You can see in the back part of the car, Leo Durocher and, and the lady at the right far right is Lorraine Day, the actress that was Leo Durocher's wife. And in the front seat, Gilberto Rodriguez. They call him El Jeque, El Jeque Rodriguez. He was the promoter of that uh, game, only game in, of the Dodgers in Puerto Rico. He signed the contract. He went after the Dodgers. They were in the Dominican Republic. And over there, he made the arrangement and he brought the Dodgers to Puerto Rico. 
and Jackie was a sensation. Uh, the things that I read in the newspapers that he had time for everybody. He signed a lot of autograph. Although he was not yet, uh, people knew, people knew that he was great, but you know, it was the first, he came the first year after he was in the, the big leagues that mm -hmm. the Dodgers, uh, were the, the champions in the 1947. They were the champions in the national league. Right. So he had only played one year with the Dodgers at this point. Yeah. So, but people were crazy with him. And here you can see Gilberto Rodriguez, Leo Rocher, and Pee Wee Reese and Banghead, Dan Banghead, who came to Puerto Rico with the Dodgers and played with, with Ponce, Caguas, uh, and Santurce. And here we have an ad, Brooklyn Dodgers versus Superior Puerto Rico. Superior is a rum, rum, rum superior. Uh, and uh, it was a courtesy of Gonzalez Clemente and company from Mayagüez. This is before the game. Jackie Robson keeps signing uh, autograph with promoter Gilberto Rodriguez. Puerto Ricans follow the game, and they knew that that was the rookie of the year. So they knew that he was he was he was good. Uh, right. And the, the the what he made, you know, the first Afro American playing the in the big leagues. This, now, out of out of curiosity, when when the Dodgers came over, was this before the the regular Puerto Rican winter season, or was this after or during? During uh, during this the the uh, se uh, se final series. Okay, they stop, play that game, and continue with the final series. Got it. The next picture, I didn't know that this reporter was in Puerto Rico. It was news for me, you know. The great Wendell Smith. Oh, wow. He was in Puerto Rico. He came with the Dodgers and Nick Lacey of the Afro American magazine. We see him with Heriberto Marin, uh, a reporter, writer for El Imparcial. And I didn't know that Wendell had come to Puerto Rico. So I learned that last week. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. And then here we see Heriberto Marin with Rafael Ponflores, another top writer in Puerto Rico, and Branch Rickey before the game. Lorraine Day threw the first ball. She and was very was, happy. You said that this was Leo DeRoche's wife at the time, yeah. right? The yeah. actress, yep. Yeah. yeah, the actress. In the game, uh, Jackie Robinson, here we see Jackie Robinson. He hit a double in five at-bats. The catcher is Luis Villolas and the, the umpire Larry Gitz. And he played first baseman in that game. As a matter of fact, he played first baseman in his first season with the Dodgers. Right. That's one of the things that I, I most admire of him because he never played that, that position. And when he came to the big league, and with all the trouble that he had and all the, the the things that he had, or uh, the punish and the people, you know, talking and screaming mm -hmm. bad names to him and playing in a position that it was not his natural position. He was rookie of the year. So that you, that tells you how great athlete Robinson was. Right. And, and the catcher, Gil Hodges. Oh, wow. Gil Hodges was the catcher in that game. So um, they won five to two. It took the first, you know, the front page of the, the of the principal newspapers in Puerto Rico. It was a big event. Mm -hmm. That's the box score. Jackie, first baseman, Pee Wee Reese, Gil Hodges played the whole game and, and as a catcher. Duke Snyder, pinch hitter. And we have uh, some stars in, uh, in the Puerto Rican team. Many oh, yeah. players, fellow Gilbe, Tetelo Vargas, Luis Canena Marquez, Luis Villodas, uh, Coco Ferrer, uh, Efigenio Coco Ferrer, Carlos Manuel, Carlos Manuel Santiago, Luis Raúl Cabrera, his, his name is, his real name is Luis Rafael Cabrera. Uh, Jose Santiago Pants, Pantalone, they, told, they, they call him in the United States, Pants mm -hmm. Santiago. And Sefocondo, Sefocondo did not play in the Negro Leagues. 
But it was a good a good game and uh, Brooklyn defeated Puerto Rico 5-2. The winning pitcher was Phil Hogstad and the loser Pantalones Santiago. The attendance was 9,939. So you're going to have to help me out with this. I see at least four Puerto Rican Hall of Famers here. Vargas, of course, uh, Canena Marquez, and uh, Jose Santiago, and Stefo Conde, I believe, are all in the Hall of Fame. Are there others here? Is yeah. there... Cabrera, you, is he one? Yeah, you're talking about the Puerto Rico Hall of Fame. Yes, yes, you're correct. Plus Carlos Manuel Santiago, plus Luis Cabrera. That's right. I thought I, uh, I recognized Cabrera from in there too as well. Wow. Yeah, Cabrera uh, was the first pitcher to win 100 games in Puerto Rico. And uh, they call him always. Oh, that's Luis Raul Cabrera. What happens is that he didn't know how to write and he put... Luis R. Cabrera and Rafael Bonflores put Raul, but his real name was Rafael. Mm -hmm. I, I knew that from his brother about five years ago. I have to correct all the things, all the places that Luis Raul <laughs> Cabrera was <laughs> with his real name. So that was a good team. Uh, Puerto Rico presented a very good team. The manager of Puerto Rico was Joe Busas. Okay, after that game in 1948, Governor Luis Muñoz Marín visit, visits Jackie Robinson and Luis Rodriguez Olmo, Puerto Rican, at Evans Fields. He invited Robinson to, to La Fortaleza, the governor's mansion. He, he told Jackie, when you come to Puerto Rico, please pay me a visit. This picture, this is in Evans Field. We can see Luis Rodriguez Olmo reads to Jackie Robinson the, port, the sporting section of El Diario de Nueva York. That's a Spanish paper, mm. Spanish language. And they were very friends. Luis, Don, uh, Luis Rodriguez Olmo always told me that, you know, how was Jackie Robinson? How was your relationship with him? He was my very good friend and he treated me so well and I respect him and I admire him a lot. He was a very good ball player and uh, uh, he was my friend. So it's a great shot. I, I was curious if, because uh, if if Almo played any part in in Jackie coming over to to Puerto Rico, but I guess it was really the Dodgers as a whole that that came over. No, the 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 the, 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 the responsible for that was Gilberto Rodriguez, the promoter, mm -hmm. who had the you know saw ahead. He said, "I'm going to bring this, this team to Puerto Rico," and he flew because what happened what happens is that. The Dodgers were going to go to Dominican Republic to, to, to play, but they, they made a they stopped first in Puerto Rico. And mm -hmm. there, there is was Gilberto Rodriguez said, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Dominican Republic and I'm gonna contract, you know, make the, the arrangements so they when they come back, they stop in Puerto Rico and then go to the United States. And that's what he did. That's why they play only one game. Sorry to make you go back. Was was Almo in the, the box score? I didn't see him there. No, he wasn't because he was suspended because he was with the was Pascal brothers. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I was gonna say there there might be another uh, uh, Puerto Rican Hall of Famer in that box score then, but he didn't yeah. play. So from that year, we go now to August nineteen fifty. Now things go begin to go very interesting. Here is Jackie Robinson signing his contract to manage Mayagüez Baseball Club at Hotel Astor in New York, Times Square, Broadway 40th, 44th and 45. And there you can see Alfonso Valdez, the owner of Mayagüez, Grace Valdez, the wife of Alfonso Valdez. You see Rachel Robinson, Jackie Robinson, the person in the middle, the man in the middle, I still I can't really identify him. So he signed the contract and they sent them to Happy Chandler but Happy Chandler did not approve it. Hmm. Uh, Jackie had talked with Alfonso Valdez. He told him that he wanted a, a house in the beach for his son and his wife. And they talk about, you know, everything, money, everything. Everything was, there was a deal done, but uh, sadly, Happy Chandler didn't approve it. So he didn't come to Mayagüez. He didn't manage Mayagüez, although... Later, we can see that he came to Mayagüez. Now, now we go to November 1950. That's the season that Jackie Robinson was supposed to manage Mayagüez. Mm -hmm. 
he received Jackie Robinson uh, arriving to Puerto Rico, invited by Rafael Ramos Covian, the owner of San Juan Baseball Club, because Rafael Ramos Covian was the owner of Covian's theaters. That was a change of, the you know, theaters changed, and there was a picture, the Jackie Robinson story, mm -hmm. and it was going to be projected at the Paramount Hotel of Covian. So he invited him and yeah, Rachel Robinson. That's an ad in the newspaper of Chesterfield, Cigarette. Jackie, welcome, bienvenido. Was all over the newspapers. Mm. And Jackie went to the Fortaleza to see Governor Luis Muñoz Marin. That, as he promised Governor Luis Muñoz Marin when they met at Ebbets Field. And that's the governor house of La Fortaleza, governor's mansion. That's the correct name. So he was treated, you know, like a very important figure. From the beginning, he noticed that uh, the admiration and the, the love and the respect that Puerto Ricans had. And it was, you know, like love at first sight between Jackie Robinson and Puerto Rico. It's another picture of him in Puerto Rico. This is the picture, the Jackie Robinson story, proud, unafraid, great. And it's one, there's another, this is very interesting. That's another, El Pelotero Denia, that's a milk, Denia milk. And Teatro Paramount, Paramount Theater, Jackie Robinson in person. Mm. So he, none of the other Dodgers were over on this trip. This is, was uh, just for the premiere of the film? Yep, only him, him and Rachel. Great. This is a contest. La Leche Clean, that's a milk, clean. And they, that, the, 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 the can had a, a spring, a, a ring, metal ring around. If you brought one ring metal ring of a giant the big one you can have an autograph photo of, Frank, of jackie robinson <laughs> oh wow if you bought you uh, bought two medium metal rings of leche clean all three of the small can you can have a jackie robinson autograph a picture <laughs> of him that picture that you see him autograph i haven't seen that picture I don't know if there's someone, maybe, I don't know, but I haven't never seen some uh, that picture autograph. But it's a treasure. The one, the people, the person that has one of those, it's a treasure. It has to be somewhere on the island. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm sure there were a lot of uh, kids drinking some extra milk to get those. <laughs> yeah, you're true. That's right. This is the Paramount Theater. You see? It's still... You can, you know, uh, you pass by Avenida Ponce de Leon and it's still there, but it's no, it's inactive. Mm -hmm. And then that's the newspaper, the, the sports page. It's saying that Jackie Robinson's going to throw the, throw the first ball in tonight's game. Mm -hmm. And there he is. And this is... Uh... Senadores behind him. So this was uh, San Juan. Do we know who that player is behind yes, him? La, that player is Laru Velasquez. Mm. Laru Velasquez was a pitcher. That's another angle. Mm. That's, this is better. It's more clear. Right. And now comes a lot of activities for Jackie and Rachel. A lot of fiesta. You can see that that was in the house of Rafael Ramos Cobian, the man that brought him, the owner of someone, and the owner of the theater, and they made a big fiesta for Jackie and Rachel. Mm -hmm. I have that was November seventh, nineteen fifty. I have it here, Jackie dancing with Josefina Fernandez, that's the wife of Rafael Ramos Cobian. This is talking with Rafael Ponflores. Another uh, picture of him dancing with Josefina. A lot of people, you know, gather around him, ask him 
uh, question, and, and, and he was very, very polite, very friendly. He enjoyed a lot that, that, that uh, stay in Puerto Rico. There you can see uh, Rachel, Rafael Ramos Cobian, Jackie Robinson, and Josefina Fernandez. And at last, Jackie Robinson with Rachel dancing. Mm -hmm. They had music, live music. Oh, that's great. And in that trip, they went to a school. This is very interesting. San Felipe School in Arecibo. You can see Rachel and Jackie in the middle, the students around him. Look at the face of Jackie and, and Rachel, how uh, happy they were, how comfortable they, they felt. There was always any place they, they went to Puerto Rico, there was a lot of, they show admiration. That's the when uh, the newspaper telling that Jackie went to see the governor of Puerto Rico, made the front page, the sports page. That's closer. Mm -hmm. Then he went to Mayagüez with uh, Alfonso Valdez, and he threw the first ball. There's no pictures of him in Mayagüez throwing the first ball, but he threw the first ball in Mayagüez, and he was friend of Alfonso Valdez too. And he went to the Mayagüez dugout. He talked talk with the players, and, and he stayed all the game. He enjoyed a lot. This is the second visit of Jackie Robinson, this time with uh, Rachel. So she went to the, the governor's house too. He visited the Sixth Escobar Stadium. He received Jackie Robinson uh, chatting with Junior Gillian of the Dodgers in the dog of Santurce. Mm. And that is a great picture that uh, my friend Adam used as a for the ad. You can see Luis Cabrera, Bob Thurman, Ruben Gomez, and Buster Clarkson at Sixth Escobar Stadium. Day game. Yeah, this is a great one here. <laughs> yeah. And after he finished all those, all those games and all those baseball activities, they took him offshore fishing. You can see <laughs> the man. Oh yeah. Enjoying fishing. There you can see Jackie, Rachel. Boy, this is great. They just followed him around with cameras the whole time. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah. he was a big figure. Now we go to Jackie Robinson, July 1963. I want to tell that this, you know, the only this is only the thing, the, the visits that I I can I can could investigate. Maybe he came other other times, but. I can see no 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 more visits. So we have only this visit. This 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 should be the last visit of Jackie Robinson to Puerto Rico in July 1963. This is this picture. I love it. When he arrived <laughs> to Puerto Rico, he put that. That's what we call in Puerto Rico. That's our typical hat, la pava, and he put a pava, and he was so happy to arrive to Puerto Rico. You can see in his face. That is amazing. <laughs> And here you can see him in the Caribe Hilton discussing rules for tennis tournament at the Caribe Hilton. You can see Jackie Robinson here at the right. Mm -hmm. And then he played golf at Dor Dorado Beach Hotel. And this is a, a, a interview that they made in, in the Dorado Beach Hotel. This se agravará más la lucha racial. Racial, racial issues will be worse. Will get worse. Is what uh, Jackie is saying that in that in that headline. Right. And that yes. was in 1963. Yeah. So after that, we have uh, Jackie Jackie Robinson's death, October 1972. You know that we lost Jackie Robinson in October 1972 and Roberto Clemente in December 1972. Right. Three months apart. Uh, he made the front page of El Mundo newspaper. You can see here, Fallece Jackie Robinson. Uh, and they made a, 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 they wrote a lot of things about him. So 
that is, you can see that, uh, you can see uh, that he enjoy being in Puerto Rico. You can, you can appreciate uh, the love and the admiration that we have. And, he, and as Puerto Ricans treated Jackie Robinson as, treat, as, they, as they treated all Negro Leaguers who came to Puerto Rico. You know, right. they were our heroes and Jackie Robinson was a hero. So uh, I'm proud of it because I'm very proud that of the how Puerto Ricans deal with all these Negro Leaguers, the respect and the love and the admiration that they, they have and they had for them. And Robinson was not the exception. Absolutely. It reminds me of, uh, even though Josh Gibson did play in the, the Puerto Rican league, when we had our episode about Josh, we talked about the different tours that he came over and, and how much he was admired and the things he would do uh, all over the Island with, with all these, uh, you know, political figures and celebrities. So it's a very similar type of thing. And uh, if you haven't seen the Joshua Gibson episode of Negro Leaguers in Puerto Rico, I highly recommend checking that out. I actually was just going through it the other day, just to refresh my mind on, on uh, what uh, he was doing when he came over uh, to the Island before the, the start of the league. So, uh, uh, I really appreciate you sharing this, this, uh, these visits he would have outside of like league play. Yeah, because it, it, the 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 interesting thing of this presentation is that we we didn't talk about what he did as a ball player. Right. It's all as you know, it's his personal life, and uh, you know he played golf, he fish, he dance. Uh, so I, I, it it took me a time, a lot of time to do this presentation because I had to look up out for the paper take pictures but i i i love it uh anything i can do you know to to for jackie robinson all those negro leaders you know there's no problem and i'm i'm hoping that maybe this presentation i can send it to the jackie robinson foundation and maybe they can use it over there so they can teach the the, the children you know the, 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 the boys and girls that go to the to the foundation the relationship that had Robinson, Rachel and, Rach and Jackie with in to Puerto Rico with Puerto Rico. So mm -hmm. I'm going to make the I'm going to see if I can send them to them because I will be glad. He, I'm going to be very glad for that. Yeah, so, I am very uh -huh. excited to to see that you'll you'll be sending that along. He was just such an important figure. Obviously, this is a huge month for celebrating the life of Jackie Robinson, and this was a part of it that I didn't know about and uh, an impact that he had on on puerto rico I, I i knew nothing about it so thank you again for for putting those wonderful photos together i know that you had to do a lot of research to find those and yeah. and they it, it was just so nice to see and you know, everybody's smiling he's like you said there's not as much baseball playing he's just going around the island and meeting people and playing golf and experiencing the culture and they loved him and it's uh just another beautiful side to the jackie robinson story yeah, and they, you see, people, you know, they were, they worried to, to him and Rachel have a nice time. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, tomorrow you're gonna pick you up very early. You're gonna fish tomorrow. After tomorrow, you're gonna play tennis. Then you're gonna right. play golf, and you have we have a fiesta. We have music, live music for you. You know, so uh, I'm very happy that it, he uh, enjoy his stay in Puerto Rico, his visit to Puerto Rico. I'm very happy for Rachel too. And as I said a little while, a while ago, I'm very proud of Puerto Ricans that show what we are and how we treat people. So I'm um, very glad for this presentation. Now, in a, let, let me see. Let's see the comments. Uh, we have here Ramon Melendez, durísimo, greetings from Mayagüez, enjoying the webinar. And, wow, caviar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Tweeting as human here. Angel Caban said, tweeted as human beings and heroes in Puerto Rico. Yes, Angel, that's true. Also, thank you, Ramon, Rory, Jose Campos, and Angel Caban for their comments. Now, we had in our last show, remember that someone said that Roberto Clemente batted for Bob Thurman in his first at bat. No, it right. was not. And I said, no, that was not. I wanted to bring you the show you the box score. Clemente, oh, that's the first game of Clemente. He came to field, he substituted Alfonso Gerard in left field, and then he had to turn at bat, and he was 1-0. That was oh, in yeah. the 21 of October, 
October 21, 20, October 21, 1952. You see the number 21, the one that he used. So he, the first game of Clemente was October 21, 1952, Sixto Escobar Stadium. Then the first hit was two days later against Tomas Melesio from of Mayagüez, and that was at Sixto Escobar Stadium too. A Clemente play left field. Mm. Center field was Bill Bruton, and as right field, as always, uh, Bob Thurman. That we did a, the, our last program was about Bob Thurman. You can look it up in our channel. So the, the, the game that Clemente batted for Bob Thurman was November 30th. November 30th. November 30th, yeah. He batted for Buster Clancer told Bob Thurman, sit down, and he brought Clemente and he, and he hit a double. With the bases loaded, they won 4-2. So okay. that's the real story of Clemente when he, the first game, his first uh, hit, and the real story about when he batted for Bob Thurman. So what is in the, in the media, on the social media, is not true. Now, the other question was the home runs of Willard Brown. We knew I knew there was 27, but I always got confused about the 60 games or 80 games. It wasn't 60 games. Mm -hmm. It wasn't 60 games. Thus, this there you can see all the records of home runs in our in the Puerto Rican Baseball League. And you see uh, in red, Willard Brown. 60 right. games, 27 homers. Reggie Jackson hit 20 in a 70. 70 schedule and Orlando Cepeda 19 in an 80 game schedule. Uh, Jose Nandez, the only Puerto Rican with 20 home runs, that was in 62 games. So the record is well, every every schedule has a record, and right? He, uh, yeah, that, Willard Brown has for 60 games, Reggie Jackson for 70 games, as, as, and as you see in, in the in that chart. So, but uh, nobody has has passed the twenty seven though, as far as nobody. I can see, right? Yeah. No, so that's nobody. the the all time, regardless of the length of the schedule. Yes, I don't think I don't think nobody's gonna hit twenty seven game twenty seven homers in Puerto Rico. You know, that was a monster year for for Willa one uh, two triple crowns, one MVP, three fifty mm -hmm. lifetime average, six hundred four slugging average. You know, uh, he's the greatest offensive player in the 85 years of our league so that's now we, we we answered those questions now we have we want to share our friend and colleague adam has a what tell us about this yeah in june i'm going to be doing a webinar for the josh gibson foundation um i was wondering what to call the the topic so i, I settled on beyond the Negro Leagues, outsider baseball, outside the United States. And, and I wanted to start with, with Josh Gibson and talk about how not only did he play in the Negro Leagues, but he also played all over the place, in Cuba, in Puerto Rico, in the Dominican Republic, in Venezuela. And through learning about Josh Gibson and through talking to you and, and other folks, I've learned all about this, this whole world of Latin American baseball. And I wanted to tell the story of this, about how these players – had these huge careers outside of the U.S. And I wanted to shed some light on some lesser known players. You know, everybody knows Josh Gibson. Everybody knows Roberto Clemente. But uh, I wanted to talk about some some other stars that uh, I had found amazing statistics for, whether it was in Cuba, in Mexico, in Puerto Rico. And uh, what I ended up doing was I, uh, I collected some players I wanted to talk about, and it really turned into uh, what I'm calling an outsider baseball all-star team. It kind of lined up really nicely where it had basically a player at each position. Some players I had to move around. But uh, basically the, the topics uh, of the, the talk are going to be uh, at pitcher. It's going to be Ramon Bragania, yeah. at catcher, uh, Quincy Troop. Oh, yeah. I, I put uh, first base is Perucho Cepeda. I, I had to move him because I had three shortstops on the team. So, and he <laughs> so played first base. And he played, played first base. He did play some first base, and I thought it was a nice little nod to Orlando as well to to put Perucho at first base. Yeah. Good. At second base, we have Marvin Williams, who also spent some time in Puerto Rico. 
shortstop is is um silvio garcia who played a lot everywhere <laughs> yeah. um you know as part of this uh we, we've talked about this uh, even in the bob thurman episode i've been trying to collect as many stats as possible for all these players and silvio garcia i have collected over 2600 hits so far so he's he's just got a long career that he played everywhere and played well then at third base we have buster clarkson um mm -hmm. he, he played some third base later on he was also a shortstop uh, and then in the outfield, I have Pancho Coimbre, uh, who, we, of course, we did an episode on him as well. Uh, in center field, I have Tatela Vargas, who uh, we're probably going to be doing an episode about in the future, yeah. who I think is is uh, just a, a remarkable figure uh, in the game. Played for 30, 40 years uh, in so many different countries. Although, oddly, he's like the one that didn't play in Mexico. He played everywhere else, like but not Mexico. Mm -hmm. He played in Colombia. He played in, in the Trujillo league in 1937. And then my right fielder is wild bill, Wright. I thought about having Bob Thurman be my right fielder, but uh, I wanted to find somebody who played in, in a few more countries and, and wild bill had a really nice story I wanted to tell as well. So those are the players I'm going to be talking about. There's, there's so many other players who had great careers in Latin American uh, baseball as well that I could talk about like uh, Alejandro Crespo and, Augustin Bejarano, uh, Bob Boyd. I think Bob Boyd spent some time in, in uh, Puerto yeah. Rico as well. Uh, he's Oil Ken Boyd's uncle, of course. Uh, Leon Kelman had a great career in Panama. Just so many interesting figures. Uh, Alejandro um, Ohms. Alejandro Ohms, yes. Um, well, for most of them, I, I wanted to choose players who... Uh, overlapped quite a bit with with Gibson, so I didn't focus on Ohms, but yeah. he's another one that I definitely could have covered if I expanded it out further. So, um, and a lot of these, well, all the ones that I'm going to be covering are not in the Hall of Fame. I'm not really making the case that they should be in the Hall of Fame because you know it's the National Baseball Hall of Fame. But what I want to have people come away with is is that these were players that, in many cases, had Hall of Fame level talent, mm -hmm. and I think that they're players that people should know. So I'm really looking forward to talking about them. I've been learning about them just so I can tell people about them because, you know, that they, they were players I didn't know enough about. So I wanted to, to find out more and share it with everybody else. Oh, that, when I saw that, dad, he's, oh, man, he's going to get, he's going to do, he's going to talk about Latino ball players, And that's especially Puerto Ricans. But in this case, you're going to you have a mix, a good mix. But as I told you, we need more Adam Dabrowski to talk about these players because uh, there are a lot of histories, as you say, stories that had to be said, told, you know, and and I, I, on behalf of, well, my, my person, thank you so much for all the good work that you're doing because I follow you on Twitter and I, I see those, those <laughs> a lot of statistics that you have accumulated. So, and that's a hard work. I know that's a hard work. And I mean, I, thank you so much. I have to admit, you know, it's a lot. I'm really just kind of collecting the stats. I'm not really uncovering new ones here. So I have to say, like, folks like yourself, uh, the Negro Leaguers, uh, Negro Leaguers in Puerto Rico site, and Seamheads, who've collected a lot of data in Cuba, and uh, also with Mexico. And, you know, there, there's a lot of, like, going through books to find, you know, some older Mexican and Cuban data as well. But so I'm really just adding it all up. I, I, I putting it all in one place because there's a lot of information in a lot of different places. And I think just seeing that whole table, almost like the back of a baseball card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. yesterday was uh, to Taylor Vargas's birthday, the anniversary of his birth. And he's just one that has really captured the imagination because he just seemed like an incredible player uh, for such a long time. And I'm really looking forward to, to talking about him and, and uh, eventually doing an episode on, on, in this series about him. Yeah, there's so much to do and so many f players that we're going to cover. I hope so. So, again, thank you. Congratulations. And I'm going to be there in that presentation with you. And uh, very happy, very happy for you, very happy for me and for all Latinos that we are getting, you know, that, that, that people in the United States are having interest in our our history. So that's good. About Tetelo Vargas, I'm... I'm going to do all my best to have uh, Tom Van Heining, uh, a great author, the only author, American author, with two books in English about Puerto Rico. Mm. He's my friend. He writes for Baseball 101. I'm going to see what he was, he's doing next next month. So 
it's possible that we have uh, Tetelo Vargas. We're going to have Tom Banghani talking about Tetelo Vargas. So, also, that's looking forward to that. I'm very happy. Well, great show as always. Thank you, Adam. And please uh, say goodbye in your style. <laughs> in my style. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, everyone. And we will see you next month on Negro Leaguers in Puerto Rico. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.